All right, welcome back again. Today we're going to be looking at a PT2399 based delay circuit, which is the most common application for this chip. And we're just going to take our time and walk through it and explain what the various pieces are doing. Um, the schematic that I've chosen is based on the Mad Professor Deep Blue Delay, which is considered one of the standard PT2399 delay circuits. And as any of you who have been following me for any amount of time know, I kind of have a thing for PT2399s and other delay chips. A lot of my projects are delays and reverbs, or um, sometimes you can even use the chips for some kinds of modulation. And so they're just a lot of fun to play with. So we are going to go ahead and dig in here. Um, the thing about a PT2399 PT is that it is actually a digital chip. Um, what happens is it's reading data in, storing it in a buffer, and returning it at a later time. And because it's a digital chip, most digital chips work on a lower voltage than what we do, what we use for guitar pedals. The PT2399 has a maximum input voltage of, I believe it's 6.5 volts. Anything at that level or higher runs the risk of actually damaging the chip. It's considered standard practice to run it at 5 volts. And so you'll see in our power section up here, we've actually got a 5 volt regulator. So we're actually going to start things a little differently and walk through the power section just so that um, we can uh, get that out of the way and then dig into our audio path. So we have our plus 9 volts coming in right here and it shows a 33 ohm resistor. Now by going through this resistor and then to um, this capacitor through C2 to ground we are actually forming a low pass filter. We are getting rid of all of the signal that is above DC basically because of how small this resistor is. It sets um, it, this is a small resistor, this is a large capacitor, it's going to siphon off a lot of frequencies. It's going to be a very small cutoff frequency, so that's to leave us with just the DC signal. Okay, and then um, this diode is here for polarity protection. We have our regulator. And then on the other side of the regulator, we have this electrolytic capacitor here. And the point of this electrolytic capacitor is to um, build up kind of a little bit of reservoir and smooth out this um, 5 volt supply. If something all of a sudden needs to pull a little more current, then we have a little reservoir of charge here that it can pull from so that we don't end up pulling the voltage down even lower. And then on the other side of this power section here we go through a 10k resistor and then a 10k to ground which gives us a bias voltage right here that is one half of our supply voltage so four and a half volts and that is going to be used for biasing the op amps so that we have the signal running in the middle of the voltage supply range. And then this capacitor right here does the same thing where it acts as a little bit of a reservoir of charge and to help smooth things out so that we don't have any disruptions going on with our bias voltage. So with the power section out of the way, let's start looking at our um, audio section. So from our input, we have our pull down resistor to ground to help with any kind of pops when we're switching. We, it also will act as a drain for C1 here, which is our input capacitor. And then we just have a fairly standard inverting op amp gain stage. Okay, so we bias the positive input terminal 
The gain is determined by the ratio of our two resistances, which in this case is a, an amplification factor of two. So we're going to give it six dB of, of gain because it's voltage amplification. And you may be wondering why it is that we are using an inverting op amp stage. And the reason for that is that on the output, we also have an inverting op amp stage that is configured as a summing amplifier. The resistors R4 and R17 work in conjunction with R5 to set the gain of our two signals that get summed together. An op amp is really great for summing multiple signals, but it's done on the inverting input. So when we invert the input, we then invert again on the output, and that means that we end up with a signal on the output that is not inverted relative to our input. Okay, so after we come through our our uh, input stage here, our input buffer, the signal that comes out goes through R4 and into our output buffer here, okay, so that it can get summed in with our delayed signal. Um, this is why you, this is to allow you to have dry signal and wet signal combined. If you wanted to make it so that you could have no, no dry signal, you could either put a switch here or you could change how the mix pot is done. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But the output of our input buffer also goes to the output buffer and it also splits off to come down here into the delay stage which is where we're going to spend most of our time. So our signal first goes through a capacitor and this capacitor is to uh, remove any DC voltage that, there, that might be on the signal. And then you'll see what looks like a really funky arrangement with R8, R9, R14, C7, and C6. Okay, These five components are actually feeding two input terminals of an op amp. Okay? On a PT2399, pins 13 and 14 are input and output of an op amp, and 15 and 16 are input and output of an op amp. And these are, th their intent is to be filters. So you'll see that, you know, they've got um, designations LPF1 and LPF2. And when we use these resistors and capacitors in this setup, it actually forms what is called a multi-feedback filter topology. A multi-feedback filter is a, um, is a very efficient two-pole filter. Um, I will put some references for um, going and learning more about them down in the description. Um, we're not going to get into like the nitty-gritty of their frequency response or anything, but the way that this whole section, including the off amp there, the way that this is all configured is as a multi-feedback low pass filter. Okay, so we're actually taking off a little bit of the high frequencies before we send it in to the delay stage. Get rid of these marks. So that is how we get our signal into the chip. Pin 16 is kind of considered the input to the chip. We get a signal out on 15 that helps us create this feedback loop for our filter, but also our signal, our delayed signal, comes out of pin 12. Okay, so our signal is going to come out here it's going to go through this resistor, and then we've got this resistor, and this resistor, and this capacitor, and this capacitor, and this resistor, that if we kind of 
were to shift them around and everything, we would see that what we're actually creating is another multi-feedback filter using this section of the circuit, okay? Because our pins 13 and 14 are also the input and output to an op amp, and we have, we've got these things configured to be another multi-feedback filter low pass, or multi-feedback low pass filter, okay? So that's part of the reason why we see so many components compared to like, you know, a basic fuzz or something like that. So we take our output from 12, it comes in on 13, and then we get the filtered out on 14, which means that we can start tracing our actual delayed signal starting from here on 14. We go through R10 and C12, which form a, an RC filter. So we're actually rolling off some of the highs here with this RC filter. The deep blue delay is supposed to be voiced like an analog delay, which means that we lose high frequencies. And so we are rolling off some high frequencies right there. Then C5 is going to act as a DC blocking capacitor, right? Oh, let me get my marker back here. C5 is a, a DC blocking capacitor. And from here, it can come up here into the mix pot because that's the actual delayed out signal. But then we also might want to feed some of the signal back into the input to regenerate again and again and again to give it this sense of it echoing and dying as it's echoing. So in order to do that, we also take the signal and we come through R16 which is right here. And with going through R16 and with C15 being a capacitor to ground, this makes another RC filter. So we're actually rolling off more high frequencies so that it sounds kind of like the, the natural degradation of the signal from an analog delay. And then we go through our feedback potentiometer. And the feedback potentiometer is set up in this way, you'll notice that it's not a normal voltage divider like we tend to do for, um, say, the mix pot up here. The mix pot's just a basic voltage divider, but we can't do that for the feedback because if we were to, if we were to set this up as a normal voltage divider control and we were to turn it all the way down, then this connection point would short to ground. And what that would do is that would present ground here, which is going to mess with um, is going to mess with our signal level here, because it will now see more uh, a more convenient path to ground, if you will, coming back this way. And so we'll actually lose a lot of signal if we do it that way. So the feedback pot is set up in that way to avoid that kind of loss. And then on the output of our feedback pot, we go through this cap, which is going to block any DC. We go through this resistor, which coming into our op amp stage, this resistor is going to govern kind of the maximum level that we can have as we come back in. So playing with that value would make it so that we could um, make our signal going back into the chip stronger or weaker. Um, if you were to make it larger, for example, then you wouldn't get the big self-oscillation that can happen um, when you turn the feedback all the way up on some of these pedals. So that takes care of the entire delay signal path. But now let's follow the delayed signal out because after we put um, feedback back in, it's going to come through the same path and it's going to come back out up here. 
So this is our voltage divider level. It goes through a DC blocking cap and then it goes through this resistor here. And you'll notice that that resistor is actually a little smaller than this resistor. When you have a summing amplifier like this, the gain for each signal is the ratio of your feedback resistor to each of these input resistors. And so with this one being smaller, it means that it's actually going to get a little bit more amplification of this signal than this signal. And that's good because with this device being five volts um, and, you know, not having any positive gain in it, we might want to have there be a little extra gain in this output stage just so that we can make it so that our delayed signal and our direct in signal have the same level coming out once they're mixed together. And then in our output buffer here, we've got a small capacitor again to help with um, stability on the high frequencies so that we're not, you know, amplifying anything that is way up in frequency and causing noise. We then have our output capacitor. We have a resistor. If it was me, I would also put a large value resistor here to ground just to act as a pull down, but that's, you know, not strictly required. Um, but if you make something like this and you do have an issue with it popping, that would be something that you could check. So with that, we have looked at all of the actual audio path, but there are a couple of other things that I wanted to point out about the PT2399 here that we haven't addressed yet. There are lots of other pins going on here. I'm not going to give you a full rundown on how the PT2399 works. I'll put a link in the description to the excellent Electro Smash page. Um, but a couple of things to point out. Um, we are feeding it with our digital voltage, which is five volts. And then we have a ref, this is an internal voltage reference at two and a half volts. And so we put a big old capacitor over here to help stabilize that. I have actually um, had times where the solder joint on this was dodgy on one of my boards. And it does make a very big difference having that cap there or not. It's very important that the ref stays very, very stable. So make sure you put that capacitor there. And then um, CC0 and CC1 are caps for the modulator and demodulator that are internal to the chip to help provide some filtering. It's the same thing over here on this, on this uh, OP2 and OP1 where there's a capacitor between the in and out. It's to provide... Um, some high frequency filtering so that you don't get all the hash from the modulator and demodulator digital circuits that are internal. So that's why those capacitors are there. And then a really big thing with the PT2399 is how you adjust the delay time is done off of pin 6 here. And pin 6 is, it, it says VCO, that stands for Voltage Controlled Oscillator. And what this does actually is it stays at 2.5 volts all the time. This pin voltage will always stay at 2.5 volts. And there's internal compensation that monitors the amount of current that's getting pulled out here. And so um, when we change the resistance from pin six to ground, we're changing the amount of current that gets pulled through, which means we're actually changing this oscillator here. When we are, when we use a very small resistance, if we were to use Ohm's law, it would say that a small resistance is going to pull more current for the same voltage. So if we were to take this delay time and turn it all the way counterclockwise, we short this out, which means that this becomes 
just like a wire connection and we're left with our minimum 2.7k ohms and this resistor r18 is setting the minimum time that we can have um, with our delay but there are some caveats there one is that if this resistance goes too low the chip will actually lock up it puts the chip into a state that it can't handle and you end up getting no delayed signal out so there is a minimum amount of resistance that you have to have in order for the um, delay to work but also there is a minimum delay time that the chip can handle and that has has to do with things like its buffer size and its clock speed and just the way that it was designed and on the PT2399 your minimum delay time is going to be around 30 milliseconds you simply cannot get less than that no matter what you do now if we were to instead take our potentiometer and turn it all the way I guess this is all the way clockwise um, then we would have a total of 52.7 K ohms along here which means we're going to be pulling less current which results in a longer delay time but again there's a caveat in that if this resistance from pin 6 to ground goes too high you will start getting serious signal loss um, in fact the chip is really only rated for clean delays up to about 300 milliseconds is all um, lots of designs will push that up to six seven sometimes even 800 milliseconds but the longer you make that maximum delay time the more degradation your repeats are going to have and so if you were to make the resistance really high so that you had something like a one second or a 1.2 second delay time your your delays are going to sound really nasty there's going to be a lot of uh, unpleasant distortion of the signal uh, that happens so you know you'll see a 50k ohm pot with something in the 1 to 1.5k region up to about 3k um, for your fixed resistor as being kind of standard but feel free to play with it um, some things that are really fun to do is to um, start messing with with the delay time by using either variable resistance elements or by using other methods of changing the amount of current that will get pulled from pin 6 to ground so you'll see things like the the Keeley magnetic echo uses um, an LFO that basically varies between 0 volts and 2.5 volts right here and if it, if we have 2.5 volts here and we put 2.5 volts here there's no voltage difference which means no current can come through here which means that it's going to be it's going to really change our delay time compared to when we put zero volts here at ground and it's pulling a lot more current and as you change that delay time you actually get a, a modulation effect that if the delay is really really short it can be a chorus and so there are lots of different schemes that people have cooked up to um, do choruses with the PT2399 um, there have even been a couple of flanger designs you can cascade lots of different delay stages to get um, more kind of a, a reverb type sound I've got several projects like that um, you can go visit my website to see some of those but there's the TBR that has a single PT2399 there's the spare room that uses two there's the T60 and the wishing well that each use four PT2399 so you can really kind of mix and match and play around with them if you've ever seen a reverb project that uses a belt and brick it just has three PT2399s with some other components and circuitry they're internal to it and that's really all it is um, you can go look at the patent documents to see how it's all put together and it's really quite fascinating because 
so many things can be done with a chip that was really just designed to add a little bit of echo on karaoke machines. But there we go. We have now walked through a PT2399 delay. Hopefully that was helpful to you. And um, if you haven't subscribed already, I invite you to do so, so you'll be notified of the next one. And we'll see you then. Thanks.